Narcissism is a very hot topic nowadays, but it's very important to note that narcissism isn't a one-size-fits-all label. There are so many different types of narcissists and levels of narcissistic tendencies that it's hard to diagnose someone with just one type. Sometimes, just like everyone else's personalities, there are multiple diagnoses mixed in. Today, we're going to delve into the depths of what happens when a sexual narcissist meets a dark empath. Now, if you're a book boyfriend or book babe, you might have gone excited with visions of Christian Grey and Tamlin dancing in your head. Alas, this particular mixture of qualities is not what you think. Let's talk about it. In this corner, we have the sexual narcissist. This is not your traditional narcissist. This type of narcissism pertains only to the individual's sex life. This is the individual who can't stop bragging about their sex life or skills in the bedroom. Some key characteristics of the sexual narcissist are sexual exploitation, sexual entitlement, low sexual empathy, and an exaggerated sense of their skills in bed. Studies show that when sexual narcissism is present in an individual, there is greater potential for infidelity in the early years of a marriage. There is also greater potential for sexual acts of aggression to be used in the bedroom to meet their sexual need for satisfaction. What does all of this mean? The sexual narcissist will do anything they have to to satisfy their sexual needs. Do they need to manipulate you, lie to you, whine and die in you, tell you what they want, marriage and kids? Did I just describe Barney Stinson? Anyway, my point is that the sexual narcissist isn't worried about anything else but making sure they're satisfied. In the opposing corner, we have the dark empath. Now this one has layers, like ogres and onions, of course. To get a dark empath, first we need to start with a dark triad. Does anyone remember what they are? I'll give you five seconds to drop your guess in the comments. Five, four, three, two, one. The dark triad is narcissism, psychopathy, and Machiavellianism. Quick recap. Narcissism equals worried about themselves. Psychopathy equals no empathy. Machiavellianism equals manipulating others for personal benefit. I know, they already sound like a winner, but wait, there's more. To get a dark empath, you take the dark triad and add empathy. But you just said psychopathy is no empathy. I know, stay with me. The traditional dark triad is someone who only cares about themselves, their ideas, and their own goals. They will manipulate and deceive anyone around them in order to get what they want. On top of that, they don't have empathy, so they don't understand nor care how their words or actions impact others. Once we add cognitive empathy in there, it's used as just another tool to manipulate people. Cognitive empathy, or empathetic accuracy, is how well someone can perceive and understand another individual's emotions. It's like having a blueprint of the person's mind and knowing which switches to flip. Our two contenders have been announced. Now what happens when the sexual narcissist interacts with a dark empath? This is gonna be messy. Let's call our sexual narcissist Ned and our dark empath, Emily. While on a tender doom scrolling spree, Ned pops onto Emily's screen. Emily, the dark empath, does the typical due diligence checking every picture, checking his height, his bio, the whole nine. To the passerby, this is just a single girl hoping she just found the one. To a Psych2Go subscriber, we know that Emily's doing her research on Ned. She finds out that Ned is an animal lover. He's close to his grandfather, and his dream is to become a lawyer. She puts these tidbits of info in her back pocket for later. When Ned, the sexual narcissist, sees that he matches with Emily, the first thing he notices is how hot she is. He knows that being seen out with a cutie like her would definitely up his status in the dating world. He might even be able to find a younger, hotter chick. Ned goes to message Emily. What should his opening line be? Good choice, you'll never find better than me. No, too much. Although accurate in Ned's opinion. I'm so glad you swiped right on me. I would hate for you to miss out on the night of plan for us. Perfect. It lets her know that she'll miss out on my amazing self if she says no. His goal is to end the date in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. Emily receives and reads the message and sees that Ned is a bit cocky. She decides to see if she can manipulate him into taking her out on an expensive date for a free dinner, using what she learned about Ned from his profile. Now, this example is not to say everyone in dating apps is out to manipulate you or bad people. All we're saying is get to know the people you date, no matter how you meet them, before getting too attached. You may be looking for an innocent date and some companionship, but you never know what someone else's intentions are. We never want to go around diagnosing people when we're not medical professionals, but it's important to know about different conditions and their characteristics. 
As always, please reach out to a mental health professional if you are struggling with these qualities within your own personality. Have you ever met a sexual narcissist or a dark empath? Do you believe you could be one or the other, or both? We'd love to hear about your experiences. Until then, be mindful of who you let into your circle. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.